Hello students, so today we are going to start the robotics and artificial intelligence course for ICSE class 9 and the course code is 66. Okay. Now basically you will have a theory paper of 100 marks where basically you will be learning robotics in the first part and artificial intelligence in the second part. Now talking about the video today, I will be covering basic understanding of what a robot is as well as some real world applications right so let's start so you see a robotic system is in fact not a single system it's in fact an integrated network of physical and computational components that work together to perform tasks and these tasks are done with a very high degree of autonomy as I mentioned previously, it's not a single machine. It's rather brains and body working together. So, what is the brain here? Brain is basically the artificial intelligence and machine learning along with the knowledge and the knowledge is your data science. Okay. Now, these systems are designed, that is the robotic system. Now, I will write RS for robotic systems in short. So, the RS systems are designed to operate independently or with minimal human intervention. Now, here it is important that there is something called automation and it is quite similar in concept to robotic system and in a separate video, I will talk to you about the comparison with examples. So, you see these systems are very much adaptable to the environment and they are extremely good problem solvers. So, basically in its most basic way of principle, if you ask, then basically it is just like us, just like we have got our sense organs, we humans have five sense organs. So, similarly the robotic system has sound sense organ, which is a microphone, then vision sense, okay, yet sort of organ you can say then touch or force sensitivity as well just like us it also has a brain and here is what the artificial intelligence machine learning and data science they all come into play in the robot brain okay and basically as a result of this the brain and its features the robot is able to perceive, perceive what? Perceive the environment and it is able to act accordingly. When I say accordingly, according to the principles which it has been designed to perform, right? Now, as you know, artificial intelligent machines are those which can think by themselves, learn by themselves, just like humans and can take decisions by themselves. So, the robot, they can, they has to be we have to first make them able to learn something, then the way they behave, they create data, from that data we correct if there is some error in it. So, this data is fed in back into the system and the algorithm is used to correct its response. So, basically it is a cycle of perceiving its corrections and here is what the data science and machine learning comes into play. So, effectively after all this, it is important to know that just like humans, it also has its arms and muscles with which it can work. So, basically here it has got speaker or rotary or linear actuators. Now, this is just a basic explanation. Let me talk about it in more details. So, the key components, the first of it is actuator, which is basically the muscles of the robot. Now, what do they do? Just like in humans, these muscles, they convert energy, which are typically your electrical or hydraulic or pneumatic into physical motion, thereby allowing the robot to move its limbs, joints and other parts. You understand this? Next, we have got the sensors. So, these are basically the robot's eyes and ears. Now, sensors provide information about the surrounding environment, just like the five sense organs of a human. 
So, what are the sensors? It can include cameras for vision, proximity sen sensor to avoid collision and pressure or temperature sensors to monitor conditions. Okay? Next, we have got the controller. Now, this is the brain of the system. It is a computer or microcontroller that processes information from the sensors and makes decisions based on, based on its programming or artificial intelligence and then sends commands to the actuators or muscles to control movement. Now, there are other components as well. So, the uh, next one is end effector. Now, this is a tool or hand at the end of the robot's arm. It is specifically designed for the task at hand and can be a gripper, a welder torch, a paint sprayer or a surgical instrument. Okay. Now, in this regard, we will be very soon making videos for Da Vinci Z surgical system, surgical robot. Okay. Now, do look into our videos it is going to be quite exciting. Now, the next component is the power supply. Now, you see all robotic systems, they require a power source, right? They run on electricity. So, which can be, so what can be the power source? It can be either batteries for mobile robots or a direct connection to an electrical grid for stationary industrial robots. Now, next is the structure the physical framework of the robot which provides support and protection for its internal components. Now, next let us talk about the various types of robotic systems. Now, my dear students, I am not going to make a very fancy video where you will see lots of pictures of robots and all that, but this is going to be somewhat theoretical video and most important is to understand the concepts. So, you see the robots, robotic system, they can be classified in various ways. Now, some of the common categories, they include the industrial robots. Now, these are the most common types of robots in manufacturing and they are typically stationary and designed to perform repetitive or precise tasks in factory settings such as welding, painting, assembly and material handling. Next is the collaborating ro robot which are also known as cobots. Now, these are designed to work safely alongside humans in a shared workspace and they are often smaller, more flexible and equipped with sensors to ensure the safety of their human co-workers. Next, we have the mobile robots, which are designed to move and navigate their environment. So, they can be wheeled like autonomous mobile robots or AMRs in warehouses. They can be tracked or legged like Boston Dynamics Spot. Next, we have the service robots. So, what are they? These robots basically perform tasks that assist humans in various domains outside of industrial setting. Some of the examples include medical robots for surgery or rehabilitation, domestic robots for household chores like a robotic vacuum cleaner and robots used in logistics for package delivery. Also, we have got humanoid robots, a type of mobile robot that is designed to mimic the human form and movement and they are often used for research, entertainment as well as public facing roles. Now, let us talk about some of the applications. You see, these syst robotic systems are transforming our industries by increasing efficiency, precision and safety and some of the most significant applications they include manufacturing and logistics. Okay. So, Tasks like welding, assembly, painting, quality control can be easily managed. Now, in logistics, mobile robots and robotic arms are used for sorting, picking, packing and moving products in warehouses. What about healthcare? Healthcare? Well, indeed, robotic systems 
are assisting surgeons in performing delicate procedures with much greater precision like the Da Vinci Z surgical robotic system okay. and thus help patients with physical therapy through robotic exoskeletons and automate lab processes. Now that is not all robotic systems also have applications in agriculture and here we have agricultural robots which are also known as agribots and they assist with planting harvesting, weeding and monitoring crops leading to a more efficient and sustainable farming practices. What about defense and military? Come on, we are not forgetting this sector. Of course, they are used for reconnaissance, bomb disposal and other dangerous tasks to protect human personnel. What about exploration? Definitely yes. You see, robots and rovers are critical for space exploration, example the Mars rovers or the Chandrayaan rover. So, they has been exploring hazardous or inaccessible environments on earth as well such as deep sea trenches or disaster sites. Now, let me quickly show you some of the different types of robots and the example. So, industrial robot we already talked about. So, basically we can have robotic arms gantry robots and service robots. What about here service robots? Basically, they do the delivery job, cleaning robot and telepresence robots like this. And what about medical robots? I have already talked about the Da Vinci surgical system, rehabilitation robots, even pharmacy automation systems. Next, we have got the military and defense robots, right? And here, we have got UAV. What are they? They are basically unmanned aerial vehicles. Again, unmanned ground vehicles. Again, bomb disposal robots as well. After that, we have got the agricultural robots, which are basically, there are some examples include autonomous tractors, drones for crop monitoring, even fruit picking robots. Now, in a separate video, I will be showing you some of these robots at work, but not today. Today, it will be largely a theoretical discussion. Next, we have the domestic robots. So, we have got the Roomba vacuuming robots, lawn mowing robots, personal assistant robots like Jibo. Well, this does not mean we are at end. We also have educational robots like the Lego Mindstorm, social robots like Pepper and Sphero. Next, we have the research robots. So, examples include underwater robots, mass rovers, humanoid robots like ASIMO. Also, do not forget, we have got the entertainment robots as well. So, this includes robotic pets like Ibo, interactive toys like Furby, robots used in theme parks or movies. Also, we have got swarm robots. They basically these robots work together in large groups coordinating their action to complete tasks more efficiently. So, these are used in research, agriculture, search and rescue and even environmental monitoring. Now, you see just now what we have done is we have categorized robots based on their use right in various sectors. Similarly, we can also have a category based on embodiment. So, we have wheeled robots. That means, robots using wheels for locomotion and often used on flat surfaces like the Roomba, Turtlebot, self-driving cars like Waymo and Cruise. Next, we have got the tracked robots. What are they? They utilize tracks for movement, providing greater traction and stability on rough and uneven terrain. So, examples include Mars robots, bomb disposal robots. Next, we have the legged robots. Of course, they use legs for locomotion and examples include Boston Dynamics Spot ASIMO. After that, we have got flying robots. Okay? And so, they are capable of flight. So, some examples include quadraptor drones, fixed wing UAV, 
bluefin robotics auv seabed next okay oh sorry bluefin robotics auv these are basically examples of underwater robots next we have snake robots what are they basically they are robots with long flexible bodies for moving through tight spaces and navigating around obstacles think of the variety my dear students so examples include cmus bio robotics labs snake robots oc robotics snake arm robots now next we have robotic arms so basically these robots consist of a series of joints and links resembling a human arm so examples include cuca robots fano can ab robotic arms also we have got the humanoid robots like the softbank robotic pepper hansen robotic sofia basically these robots have human like forms and they are used in research entertainment and service applications and finally we have the soft robots what are they basically these robots they mimic locomotion me mechanisms of deformable matter such as fluid gels and elastomers for greater flexibility and examples include Harvard's Weiss Institute soft robots octobot so basically they have biomedical applications such as soft tools for surgery rehabilitation devices and even drug delivery so with this students we have come to an end of today's video i'll see you in my next video